Hello and welcome to another video of SpaceX updates. Although major works on the OLM seem to be completed in preparation for the first Starship orbital flight, crews are still working all day long on the orbital launch mount. We can see welding work on it almost 24 hours daily. We all have been wondering why it takes so long for SpaceX to launch its first Starship flight. The answer is simple. The orbital launch mount. SpaceX wants this test flight to be less risky and protect all the equipment during liftoff. For the last several weeks, their major focus is on the installation of the covering shield of the OLM and it's still not done yet. If there is any exposed electrical part or any component, the exhaust plume from the 33 Raptor engines of the Super Heavy booster can easily melt them right away. That is why, they have been installing a lot of covering and shielding parts to the launch mount. And it's not surprising to me, but we are almost there. From what we have seen, the delay of the orbital flight is not related to the rocket but stage zero and the paperwork from the FAA. We know that the orbital launch mount is still evolving with regular upgrades every few weeks and it's obvious that SpaceX still hasn't finalized the ultimate design and structure of the OLM, and I think this perfectly explains why the work on the Starship launch site at Pad 39A is slowing down. They might not want to do R&D work on two launch sites. Once the OLM at Starbase is ready to support a Starship launch without any issue, teams in Florida can quickly catch up. Back at the production site, there has been a lot of Starship stacking work going on inside the High Bay and Mega Bay. Recently, Booster 10 was fully stacked inside the Mega Bay and the stacking of Booster 11 is ongoing. No doubt, Starship production is ramping up with the addition of new machines and equipment at the site. Once the launch license is approved, I hope we might see a handful of Starship flights this year. I believe all these prototypes cannot just go to the scrapyard without flying. Road closures are also back at the South Texas launch site. Possible road closure schedules are posted for next week starting Monday. I am not sure which Starship will be tested but it's always an excitement to see a Starship in action. We will find out soon what they will be testing next week. Yesterday, SpaceX successfully completed its 20th mission of the year. I mean, we are just 12 weeks into the year. It took almost six years for SpaceX to achieve the same feat since the first successful mission of a Falcon 9 rocket. Four, three, two, one, ignition, engine full power, and lift off of Starlink. Go Falcon, go Starlink. Another batch of 56 Starlink satellites was sent to low Earth orbit from Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape. Vehicles pitching downrange. The first stage booster supporting this mission B-1067 was on its 10th flight and after stage separation, it perfectly landed on SpaceX autonomous drone ship. Signal Cape. Stage 1 landing confirmed. Falcon 9 has successfully landed, marking the 10th successful landing for this booster. And we're now awaiting second engine cutoff coming up With in With yesterday's Starlink seconds. mission, SpaceX has completed 75 missions for its satellite constellation and there are about 3,750 Starlink satellites in operation. Yesterday morning, Rocket Lab launched its third mission of the year. The launch was delayed by an hour or so due to bad weather in space, I mean a geomagnetic storm hit the planet during that period. An Electron rocket with two Black Sky Earth imaging satellites on board successfully lifted off Nine, from Pad B, Launch eight, Complex 1 seven, at Mahia Peninsula six, in New Zealand. Five, this was Rocket Lab's four, 35th three, successful mission overall. As part of its recover and reuse program, the first stage booster was recovered from the ocean by a recovery vessel after a parachute-assisted splashdown of the booster. Boeing's maiden crew test flight mission of its Starliner capsule, the CFT mission has been delayed at least until May. It looks like the paperwork for the mission is not finished yet. The mission was originally planned to launch in the second half of April but it will be launched after SpaceX's Axiom Mission 2 to the International Space Station. Axiom Mission 2 is currently targeting May 12 for launch for a 14-day visit to the orbiting laboratory. Yesterday, Blue Origin released a statement in relation to the findings of the NS-23 mission failure. The summary released by the company says the failure of the mission was due to the thermostructural failure of the engine nozzle. The crew capsule escape system was activated as a result. No humans on board the capsule were hurt and it safely landed back on Earth. Since that mishap on September 12 last year, Blue Origin hasn't flown a single mission till today. The company founded by Jeff Bezos is expected to return to action soon after making the necessary corrections 
additions to the design of the engine. Later today, India will launch its third mission of the year. ISRO is targeting March 26 at 9 a.m. local time for the launch of the OneWeb Launch 18 mission which will carry the final batch of the Gen 1 OneWeb satellite constellation. Again, we will stream the launch live here on this channel, so don't forget to tune in tonight at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Time or 9.30 Pacific. That is it for this video. I hoped you liked it. Thank you for watching and I will see you on the live stream later today. Until then, stay safe, stay healthy.